Wanderlust is a feeling experienced by many since the dawn of time. From nomads to pioneers and world travelers, the absence of a permanent address is one thing they all have in common. Some people have the ability to thrive in any environment with limited comfort items while experiencing the best travel and views their countryside has to offer. Fast forward a few centuries and in modern times, the covered wagon has been replaced with small vehicle campers. One key difference is that most van life travelers are not out there to stake a claim and start mining to strike gold. Unless, of course, the gold they seek to strike is social media gold. Otherwise, I have encountered a range of travelers from luxury glampers to the most low-key minimalists. The next time you take a road trip, try to spot nomadic travelers by looking for solar panels and other items that many small vehicle campers are known for. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to see more minivan camper content. Over the last three years, I have explored living and camping in my minivan and during this time I have shared some of my journey with my no build minivan camper conversion here on YouTube. This experience led me to wonder how what I do relates to van life because although I enjoy this lifestyle, I'm not really sure how minivan camping fits in. So seeking the answer to this question, I turned to the world's most trusted and accurate source of information. Wikipedia, of course. Today, I will discuss the definition of van life, so let's see what Wikipedia has to say and where small vehicle camping fits in. But before we dive into it, here's an interesting fact I recently learned. The hashtag van life first appeared in 2011 and is attributed to a photo blogger named Foster Huntington. He lived and traveled in his van for several years and has since built and settled down in an off-grid two-story treehouse in the state of Washington, which he has since called the Cinder Cone. It is a legitimately unique structure that I would describe as ideal. So check it out if you get a chance. It's pretty awesome. So a search of the word van life on Wikipedia returns the term van dwelling. This term has been around for over 100 years and is attributed to a group in the United Kingdom. I find it interesting that the Wikipedia page makes no connection between more ancient nomads or even the hippie movement of the 60s and 70s. But this is what it says. Van dwelling or van life is a lifestyle of living in a vehicle full or part time. The names are compound words that derive from the fact that it is typically done in a van that has been modified with basic amenities such as a house battery, solar panels, bed platforms, some form of toilet, sink, and storage space. Some van dwellers live this lifestyle by choice while seeking freedom, self-sufficiency, and mobility without paying for conventional stationary housing. While for others, it may be one step from living on the street or in a shelter. In 2020, an idealized version was popularized through social media with the hashtag van life. Although the term van dwelling implies living in a van, Many types of vehicles may be used for permanent mobile living arrangements, including former public buses or school buses, you know, our schoolies, camper vans, recreational vehicles, travel trailers, mobile homes, SUVs, and cars. So how does my experience relate to this definition? Well, it all started in Northern California in 2018. The rent was insane, and I'm sure it hasn't gotten any better. I started to notice camper vans lining the roads. I realized how practical and enjoyable that lifestyle could be. I even talked about it with some of my friends at the time and I learned that they were already living in campers and RVs to save thousands a month in rent. So I decided to buy a cot, a power station, solar panel, and mini fridge. And this was a learning experience where I made a few mistakes with either going too cheap with important gear or buying gear that I never use. Luckily, with the money I started saving, the expenses didn't really matter too much. Now I know what items I need for extended trips and what I can truly do without. The idea was that I would save thousands a month by turning my minivan into a sort of mobile bedroom and use the shower at my office for hygiene. The power station was the highest cost part of this entire process and I used that cot for a while, then decided that I wanted to be more comfortable. So I upgraded to the bed that I have now. Every night I would drive out to an off-road vehicle park in Hollister Hills 
and pay about $10 a night for parking. I mixed in some self camping and other state parks and got to see some great sites. Fast forward a few years and now I fall under the category of tourist that lives this lifestyle by choice while seeking freedom. Eventually I left California and am back to a better cost of living. Because I enjoyed the experience of living in my van so much, I still make trips and go camping with the minivan. In the definition, the choice of vehicle ranges from bus to car, and in my experience, anything in between, but because I think of the vehicle as more of a bedroom than a home, I tend to favor the minivan. A minivan camper gives me ample space to sit, work, and read while storing hiking and other gear for outdoor adventures. Don't get me wrong, a full-size van would give me space for a lot more stuff, but at a certain point, it's just empty space to fill and extra gas to buy. I feel that the Prius dwellers are the ultimate Spartans with minimal space and almost no room for anything other than sleeping. And at the other end of the spectrum, bus dwellers are really verging into the realm of mobile homes on wheels. Another big thing that comes out of this definition that I have been lucky enough to really not need is a toilet. This is something I did not have and do not plan to haul around. If the emergency is that great, I do have some heavy duty garbage bags that'll do the job. But for me, there have always been legitimate hard stand facilities close enough to get to in a bind. I suppose that if I traveled into BLM lands more frequently, my perspective would change. The two most significant advantages learned from the Wikipedia page are that first, you can save a lot of money on rent if you don't go overboard with blinging out your rig. And second, you can uproot and travel while enjoying the comfort of your own bed. Let's talk about the lifestyle. When I imagine what a van life lifestyle looks like, I think of Instagram and YouTube content that I've seen over the years where you can wake up, open the tailgate and sip coffee while watching the sunrise over the beach. But I think there is a sort of balance between a living necessity and freedom to travel for many van dwellers. I appreciate the more realistic depiction shown in the movie Nomadland and the culture of independence that Bob Wells over at Cheap RV Living shares. These depictions closely align with the practical side of that lifestyle that I've come to enjoy. This quote helps put it all into perspective. Happiness is when you feel good about yourself without feeling the need for anyone else's approval. In other words, if you're happy with your situation, then that's all that really matters. Your perspective about your situation is the most important one. Don't live your life based on the opinion of others. Be empathetic of other people's situations and don't do anything that you are not comfortable with. For now, treat yourself by watching this video. Mm -hmm.